Pick and Pay was founded on four small stores in the Western Cape by Raymond Ackerman in 1967. It now operates more than 775 hypermarket supermarkets and family stores. Pick and Pay has a market cap of 20 billion rand, a price to earnings ratio of 29 and a dividend yield of 3.1%. Now this is the one that's under pressure quite a bit, but they've got a new mm. CEO coming on board in January, Paul. Yeah, look, they um, have been the market laggard. Mm -hmm. So a couple of years ago, I don't know, like five years ago, uh, Pick and Pay and ShopRite had a similar market capitalization. Now Pick and Pay is 20 billion rand and ShopRite is five times larger. So that gives you a sense of just how much ground they've lost. The family control thing is a bit of an issue. This new guy, Richard Brasher, though, is a foreigner from the UK who's worked in Tesco's, Tesco's mm -hmm. which is, you know, many respects what our guys model themselves on. So he seems very clever. Uh, look, they've got a lot of work to do, though. Mm -hmm. They're late on the distribution center model. They were late in terms of that whole business of, you know, their client relationships or more specifically their supplier relationships. But, you know, it's fine. You've got a new guy now. Maybe he can already turn it around. The problem for me is that the share price already, in a sense, reflects that people have bought in anticipation of the recovery. Indeed. Are we seeing a recovery in pick and pay with a new uh, CEO at the helm? Um, no, initially we did. I mean, I think the stock moved up uh, 7 or 8%. Um, but after very poor earnings came out, you know, it gave back all of that. Uh, that. So you can see that little spike up on that graph there when the, when the CEO was announced. And then after the... The earnings came up, yeah. <laughs> smashing back down. Um, and I think it just made people you know, take a step back and say, well, how much do they need to do? But I think they put a lot of money uh, and capital into the distribution center, and it's slowly coming online. And that's really where ShopRite is just, uh, you know, they, as, as we mentioned earlier, you know, they were just so early in getting centralized distribution going. So that, that will come online. They've spent a lot of money on their smart shopper cards. They've got 5 million people on that sh smart shopper card. So, you know, you know, they can leverage off that very well going forward, but it's cost them a lot of money as well. Um, you know, I think people are betting that there's going to be a turnaround here. And if you think, you know, uh, you know it's going to revert back to the mean and shop out will come back slightly, you know, this is the trade to go for. So you'd, you'd buy, pick and pay. And, you know, if you really wanted to, you would sell shop out. But, you know, we won't do that at the moment. Paul, what did you make of the earnings that came out of pick and pay? No, they were horrible. Mm -hmm. And um, this is a company that in the last three years has delivered declining earnings. So they're not losing money, but the amount of profits is declining each year. And it's continuous, you know, excuses and talking about how it's about to come right and, you know, initiatives are being taken X, Y, and Z. But my concern is... Um, you know, you can buy ShopRite on a 30 PE in anticipation of further growth on a company that's sort of firing on all cylinders, or you can buy this one on a 30 PE that's still promising that it's going to, you know, change the way things are done. But to be fair, they do have a lot of uh, strengths. And in retail, you know, often that's what happens. The cycle turns, today's heroes fall off their perch, you know, the fallen sort of one that was lagging becomes the leader. So I guess that's why people have bought it up already. I just think it's a little bit too expensive in anticipation for me. Indeed. We also had uh, Fitch downgrading them uh, now recently as well. Yes, I think so. So, uh, you know, the PE, as, as Paul says, is quite high, the same as ShopRite. Um, you know, and can they get it right? You mm -hmm. want to pay uh, for poor performance and expect that it's going to come right. So. Uh, a lot of a lot of problems for them, but if they do get it right, uh, you know their margins are at the worst they've ever been. So there is scope to recover quite quite largely on on those margins that they've that they used to have. And uh, you know I think they they probably the, they're earning the least uh, out of out of their products out of any of the retailers. So there is if they get it right, you know there is a there is a big uptick that you could get there. So would you be hot or not on this one? I'm a, I am hot. I'm betting mm -hmm. on Richard Brasher from Tesco's to get it right, uh, and I'm a, maybe an early buyer. <laughs> okay, Paul. Yeah, Hot that's the not? key. I see it's is whether one you know gets in now. You wait to mm -hmm. see a little bit more of that because I suspect he's probably going to kitchen sink it a little bit. So when he gets there, he's probably going to um, go in with a heavy axe uh, and make a few more changes, perhaps. Although I think, as Rob says, they've already done a lot of the work mm -hmm. and the returns from that will come through. I mean, I heard recently that up until about a year or so ago, they still used to pay their suppliers by check. That kind of thing has to go. That's very and I'm quite too. sure that, uh, you know, with his experience at Tesco's, um, you know, they'll, they'll bring all sorts of modern practices from a much more competitive economy than ours to bear here. Uh, the question is, when does one buy them? Does in, one in, buy them in. now? I think um, people have bought in a little bit already, so I'm not hot on this one right. for now, but uh, it's going to be interesting to watch it.